Excellent. So, who are you? Uh, my, my name is Olivia James, and I'm a performance coach and uh, trauma expert. I'm Jimmy Cannon. I'm a jazz singer and voice coach. Great. Here we go. Um, so, we've been talking about uh, performance anxiety, and we both, I work with musicians and speakers. And one thing I noticed about the musicians that I've worked with is especially classical musicians are really terrified of making mm. a mistake mm. and that makes them quite stiff and they, they're yeah. not able to, to put as much feeling mm. into, into what they're doing mm. yeah. as, as possible. Mm. So they, sure. they're, they're very stiff. Mm. Um, and This applies to classical musicians particularly, I think, you know, yes. in, 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 in that genre. Um, there's a lot of pressure to, to get you know get it absolutely perfect. Not so much in jazz, um, but that's maybe controversial. I'm not sure, but definitely you know I, there's that you know I, it's a, a rumor you know, but dare I say it that you know um, very high end orchestras um, are all on these beta blocker drugs to, to calm them. Yes. Because they're so stressed, particularly yes. soloists. Yes. Um, uh, you know, and it all, you know, that it's a it's a terrible situation yes, to be in. And if we could, you know, if we could help them, you know, get over that without having to take any 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 yeah. supplements. Be, uh, and I know, know, obviously, some people also use alcohol for for, for, sure. for that reason yeah. as well. Yeah, I yeah. Think it's rife actually. It is in the West End. Yes. You know. Um, so there is a lot of um, people who are very talented, but not having a good time, mm. uh, and also not probably not. Being able to pull pull the best performance out that they're actually physically that they're mm. capable of. Mm. Mm. Um, so now that some there's some reasons for this, and there's some techniques that we talked about earlier on. Yeah. You said that one of your sax saxophone teachers mm. gave this really good um, mm. exercise that you can do with your saxophone. Yeah. Do you want to explain more well, about what this is? Yeah, I I I I won't mention, but one of my saxophone teachers, who's who's um, a legend in his, his own right. Um, oh, I will. His name is Ian Ballamy. He's a fantastic um, a musician, saxophone player, and was a, a very big influence to me um, as a musician. Um, one of the lessons um, was where we were, you know, we would take, um, I can't do it because I've got half a mug of coffee here, but we would take the saxophone and we would hold it in various Which positions. Which is a precious and expensive yeah, piece of equipment. Yeah, it is. And uh, not, not as expensive as, 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 as say, uh, Stradivarius. Stradivarius or something. Yes. <laughs> but uh, still, you know, a few thousand quid. Yes. And, you know, it's so you've got to be careful with it. Um, but he, you know, I would, we would hold it, well, I would hold, hold mine with just the finger on the neck, you know, and then I would put it above my head. And then eventually he would get me to put it on the floor and just gently kick mm -hmm. the saxophone. So we would just be sort of kicking mm -hmm. it slightly on the floor. And obviously to begin with, you know, what's going on? This is just crazy. You probably have some resistance to it. At the yeah, point. I've got, you know, I can't, I, I don't want, I, what, you yes. know, I don't want to do this, you know. Yeah. But, it, you know, I, it, it, it has an amazing effect on, and you explained it really, really. Could you, could you explain what's happening with I that? I think what, what it does yeah. is it, it increases your familiarity with, mm. with, the, with the object, where mm. it, normally you just use it in one position, mm. basically. You're either yeah. playing it or it's in its case, yeah. pretty much, That's right? It. Or you're cleaning it. That's, sure, sure, They're sure. all the three yeah. different scenarios. Yeah. So what this does, it, it gets you to, to, to get more comfortable with the, with the range of things that mm. you then use it with. Mm. So then there is less tension when you're actually mm. using it to play. Mm. So that range where you actually will be using it to play, yep. you've, you've stretched, it's a bit like you've mm. stretched either side, mm. so the bit in the middle becomes more, mm. more comfortable. That's right. Would that be a fair way of explaining it? Absolutely, and, and the, the, the feeling of release when you've done this for, I mean, we did it, I think, for maybe half an hour. Yeah. Um, and, you know, I laugh at it because it's a ridiculous thing to do. Um, and I've used it with my pupils as well. Yeah. Actually, I've used it um, with my singing pupils because yeah. the, the microphone, for instance, yeah. or the mic stand is, is a barrier. Some, so yes. a, lot, a lot of people use it as a crutch. Yes. Um, so, you, you know, being a, you know, I've often, like, take the microphone off, let's just put it on the floor. Let's just roll it around a yeah. bit. Let's just let's put it in a pocket. Literally put it in a pocket. You know, um, let's just you know put it under our chin or you know or just hold it with, with two fingers. Yeah. You know, 
Uh, and then you put it back on the stand, yeah. or you then you hold it again, having gone through that process, or that sort of that way of controlling yeah. the separation, as you were saying. Yeah. Suddenly, it's you're in control of the situation. You're in control of, you know, the aesthetic or, or the you know the actual physicality of that barrier that might be in front yeah. of you, or, or you know whether it be a mic stand, a microphone, or an instrument, or microphones, or a lectern, or an audience. Yeah. Um, you know. Yes. Uh, this, I think it, what, it, what I think also what it does is it reduces the amount of tension associated mm. with that mm. thing. Yeah. The amount of sort of mental and physical tension yeah. associated with, the, with that object. Yes. So for yes. people watching, so there is within, as a, within public speaking for example, mm. you can use that same principle mm. by practicing your speech in a Scottish accent mm. or really mm. slow or really mm. fast or mm. while you're doing something else so mm. it, it sort of stretches mm. and it, it, and it, it becomes like a less serious in a way so that mm. when you come to do the thing actually yeah. seriously that you have yeah. less tension associated yeah. and more freedom yeah so there's a huge amount um, around the ability to play mm. And for many people, mm. uh, there's quite a lot of trauma associated with creativity mm. and mm. play mm. as well. Or people saying, oh, don't be so silly. Yeah. But I think mm. a, a performer or, or a speaker who is able to play mm. is able to, to, to actually deliver their performance mm. better and with mm. less tension. You need to be very familiar and at ease on the stage. Yes. Um, it, it, and it might not be literally a stage, it might just be a presentation, yes. it might be an office, you know, but, you know, as soon as you get up to speak, you, you are, by definition, on stage yes. because you're performing. So that, you know, I've, I've done, I've done, we, we, we used to do things at college where I used to roll around the floor, you know. Um, and just, you know, what you're doing is you're, you're, you're finding the, you're finding the extremes of the environment. So you're, you're finding... The, the high and the low areas of, of, of the stage and the air where, you know, and it's an incredible feeling, mm. it's really liberating. Yes. Um, to, to, you know, to take, your, take an instrument, whether it be the saxophone or the microphone or the stage, um, and take it away from you, get, get, get rid of that burden, yeah. that, that burden of, um, what was the word you said, just that, that the, 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 the pressure yes. of, of, of that, which I think, you know, is, yeah. is, that's what we need to try to do. Yeah. And there's a, so what would be more, what would be other liberating ways of getting, what, what, what do you need to, you're, you're getting rid of that feeling of anxious yes. anxiety yes, yes, you are. is what you're trying, trying to, yes. to achieve. Yes. Yeah. So you feel like, that you own the thing more. Yeah. That you own your, the stage more, that you, your yeah. musical, your instrument becomes mm. something that that you that you're not scared of in mm. a way because I think there's quite a lot of tension, yeah. especially with classical musicians. Yes, so much tension associated mm. with um, mm. the connection between yes. them and the instrument. Yes. Yeah, absolutely. Good. Great. Okay. Well, I hope that was <laughs> useful. Um, whether you're a saxophone player or a singer or a professional speaker. Yeah. Um, I think we can all take something from from that. Mm. That like um, mm. try and play with with the range of what you can do, mm. and then uh, bring it back to to the middle and um, and yeah, deliver the best performance you're you're capable of. Yeah, and and be playful at the yes. same time. Go back to your your that energy of, yes. of that relaxed energy, that playful energy, and the enjoyment. Know. The enjoyment, which is the most important yes. thing. Absolutely. Great. Great. <laughs> <laughs>